Today I'm at Fantasy Island in Ingold Mills on the east coast for the first time in four years to experience the many rides and attractions this seaside amusement park offers and to be brutally honest I was a little shocked at the poor state of this park. So is it worth a visit and does the value of a ride wristband outweigh the negatives? Let's drop into Fantasy Island to find out. Greetings from Fantasy Island. Always fun to get back here. It's such a random park with lots of different attractions a market that runs through it that sells things from the 90s. It's a very, very strange place. Um, now, I have been informed there are some ride rotations today, so certain rides will operate from 11 to 2, some will operate from 2 till 5, and also due to it being very windy, and no Odyssey, and a couple of others that are missing too, but we're going to make the most of it. These guys are looking a bit sinister. So I'm going to begin the day with a ride on the Guardian. This opened last year. I think it's some sort of robo-arm type attraction. Quite intrigued by it, so let's go give it a go. Quite a little bit of effort going into the queue line here. All quite atmospheric. And you get some quite good views from the indoor section up in this queue line here, including this pterodactyl. His name's Simon, and he thinks you should like this video. Well, I'm not entirely sure what the Guardian was meant to be. So it used the kind of robo-arm type technology that like Harry Potter on a Fibbing Journey uses, um, but very mildly. In fact, I'd say it bore more relation to a flying theatre, but with occasional movements. Thing is, though, is that you had some nice sweepy sections at the start and at the end, but the main battle where you battled some demon, you just sort of sat there watching the action, and it was very blurry, very low definition, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure what they're trying to achieve with that because the actual technology is decent and could be used really effectively, but it hasn't been really. Mm. So entering the queue for Millennium, this is one of the big coasters. It is operating today. Vekoma sit down, very smooth, very solid coaster this one. So looking forward to getting back on. Millennium is a bit of a strange one because considering its age and it's an old Vekoma which traditionally don't ride that well, it is quite smooth, as a result quite forceless, but it is commendable that a ride of that age that is sat right next to the sea is still operating so well. However, those old Vekoma trains were fitted with restraints that really are not suited to people of my height, so you do feel like you're being compressed from the shoulders down, but otherwise it's fine, it's pretty entertaining, just lacking a bit of force. We've got Volcano up next, this is a shot and drop tower, always love these, love a good punch to the top and the air time burst you get up there, so let's go do this. Volcano is a perfectly fine SNS shot and drop tower. Obviously, that launch up to the top and the subsequent airtime you get up there is the highlight of the ride, but that's not the most powerful shot and drop tower you're going to find here in the UK. So, heading into the entrance for Rhombus Rockets. This, uh, it looks like a Mac powered coaster, but it's not. It's by a company called WGH Transportation. Uh, these stairs are a little bit rusty, a bit worse for wear, but the coaster, I recall, being actually quite good fun. Well, Rhombus Rocket is a powered coaster. It does what most power coasters do and gently takes you across the track. It's not very thrilling. There's some weird straight bits that are, for some reason, at an angle. I don't really know why. And I've got to be honest, the upkeep is not great. Like the restraints are all peeled, there's rusty stairs. And if you look at this down here, the sort of the fencing around it. Not in great condition. They could certainly um, tidy this up a bit. I mean, come on. So one ride I'm quite eagerly anticipating get back on is Magic. Now this was a really intense cycle last time I rode it. So fingers crossed, we get some of that again. Well, that was a slightly underwhelming cycle on Magic there, if I'm honest. So, last time I rode it, I came back here in 2020 during the pandemic. 
I was actually really impressed with Fantasy Island back then. I thought they handled things really well. But um, back then, I had a really intense cycle, and when they stopped, they then went back the other way as well. This time, we just went in one direction. The intense forces were there, but only for a split second, and you just craved them to last a little bit longer, so you really kind of felt it in your guts. But, I mean, it was fun and enjoyable, but I think I just expected a bit more. Well, despite being advised it wouldn't run today, Odyssey is actually testing and seems to be making it all the way around. So perhaps the wind speed has dipped a little. So here's a look at the ride rotation today. So they make it clear which rides are open from 11 till two and which is open from two till five. The way it's laid out, you don't get both of the big coasters run at the same time. And as you can see there, they have crossed off Odyssey today, but it has just been testing. So you never know. Um, also interesting, you do get various colored days here. This is a green day, so I am feeling like a bit of a basket case, but We'll see how the rest of the day goes. So I just thought I'd have a bit of a chat about the sort of standards here. It is feeling a bit run down. There's definitely a trashy seaside park vibe to it. And that's a real shame, because like I said earlier, when I came here in 2020, during the pandemic, I thought this was one of the best organized parks I went to. I visited 12 theme parks in the country that year. <clears throat> and I thought they really nailed it here with how they operated it and everything. But it really feels like it's falling into disrepair since then. But just about everything needs a lick of paint. Obviously, I guess staffing might be an issue, which is why they're running rides on a rotation. And it's just a general feel here that this is a park that's not running at its best by any means at all. The perfect theme park attire. So possibly the most random thing about Fantasy Island is you do have this huge market that's within the grounds. So you can come here and buy 400 pound garden furniture because obviously that's what you go to a theme park for, isn't it? So it's very, very odd. And this market kind of feels a bit dated. Like last time I was here, which was only four years ago, they were still selling like bootleg CDs, like it was 1994. Very odd, but okay, I'm here for it. It's something different. The fact that this sign is even necessary is a little concerning. On the plus side, you can come to a theme park and go home with a new bed. Yeah, it's also random, but if you want some fake sportswear clobber or a new phone case, guess you know where to come. So I think I'm gonna go and give Dragon Mountain the center go. It appears to be a boat ride. Don't really know what it is, but let's go explore. So that was basically a flume ride in a dinghy and it was fine. But I've got to say, I think the indoor section here at Fantasy Island is where it shines. Whereas outside looks like it's in a lot of disrepair. It has got much better vibe in here. It does look and feel so much better. So I'm gonna continue inside. There's a few more bits in here to do. Well, it's just gone two o'clock and the ride rotation has switched. So I'm gonna go and give Toucan Tours a ride. Toucan Tours offers a bit of a tour around sort of the top of the indoor pyramid here. So you do get to see a bit of everything. I think when you go into the indoor section, we've actually got some quite cool theming. That bit's all kind of cool. Yeah, I think it's actually one of the cooler rides here where the theming is kind of coherent and together. Obviously very gentle. There's, you're going around a monorail very, very slowly. But see how many of those monorail rides are out there that actually don't feature a great deal of theming and stuff like that. I think they've done an all right job with Toucan Tours. And into the magical sea aquarium. A bit of a classic here at Fantasy Island. Number of animatronics. 
is a little depressing to see, to be honest. I swear all this stuff used to move. Maybe I imagined it. It's odd that some things move and some don't. So many animatronics in magical sea quest adventure thing just weren't moving. It just, it felt like a really sad aquarium. You know, like when you go to an aquarium where none of the animals or marine life is taken care of and they're all just kind of sunk to the bottom, not really doing anything. Well, Odyssey is operating with people, so I'm gonna go and get beaten up on an SLC to finish off the day, I think. Loads of bird poo in the station for Odyssey. What an unexpected ride on Odyssey there. So credit to Fantasy Island for getting it open. Also credit to the wind for dying down and allowing it to open. But that's not a particularly enjoyable ride. Second SLC of the week. I mean, that's that's a bad week, isn't it? In coastal world. Yeah, there's, there's elements of it that are okay. I think the drop and the loop are quite fun. But once you start hitting the Cobra rolls and there's another really, really janky inversion on there, your ears are just rattling off the side of the restraint and it's not that enjoyable. Also, the views from up there are of corrugated iron roofs and smashed up pallets, which is um, it's not ideal, is it? And if we just turn around here, behind me, we do have a blue wild mouse coaster. That's not operating either because there's just no trains on the track. So that is Fantasy Island in 2024. I've got to say, I'm leaving a little bit sad. It feels like it's in disrepair. Um, obviously a lot of rides not operating. Many of those are on a rotation and a lot of the staff just seem quite miserable that they just don't want to be here. So in terms of prices, a adventurer wristband, which gives you access to basically every ride is £24.50. I think that's fairly reasonable for what's on offer here. It does cost another £8 to park here for the day though, which is a little steep. So let me know down in the comments what you think of Fantasy Island. I went to Flamingo Land earlier this week and rode another SLC along with the awful hero for the first time. You can check that video up on the screen now and I will catch you next time. Cheers.